today is about gratitude. Hello strangers, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you have been doing okay. It's been a hot minute since we last caught up. Um, hi, the world is a completely different freaking place and I felt really out of sorts and discombobulated and I feel like a lot of people have been in that position. Uh, today's video, I just wanted to share what we've been up to for the past couple of months, what we've been doing in isolation. I realized that I haven't really consistently vlogged or let you guys in on what my actual daily life and what I've been doing lately. Um, I don't know, like, it's just so weird to think that like I used to vlog all the time back in like 2014, 2015, and you guys that have been around for a while obviously know me from that style of content, but my life has drastically changed and I'm a different person and I do different things and I hope that Today's video and hopefully future vlogs will kind of show you a little bit more of who I am in this present moment in time. So, fingers crossed you enjoy today's video and yeah, it's just gonna be kind of puttering around. I got some work, I got some play, we got a lot to show you. I have been keeping really busy actually, but with things that I don't really have like an end goal or like an expectation out of it. I've just been enjoying doing it and learning. I've put a lot of time into self-care and into trying to learn ways how to level up and learn how to be a little more self-sustainable and learn how to grow things and learn how to preserve things and yeah I've just found it really an interesting time to try and step back and just focus on things that I otherwise maybe wouldn't have focused on and I'm just really grateful to be honest to be in a privileged position where I am able to stay home and stay safe and keep my family and friends safe and I am so eternally grateful to all of the essential workers 
yeah, it's just, it's such a weird, it's just such a weird experience. I've just tried to make the most of the situation and try and feel like I'm still progressing in some areas of my life, even if a lot of the progression that I was hoping for isn't really in my control. It's been such a learning experience of reminding myself that there is no such thing as control when it comes to the outside world. The only thing that I can control is how I act and what I do and how I spend my time. And yeah, I've just tried to make the most of the situation at hand. Hold on, I'm gonna set you on a tripod. A lot of things have changed. We have had to postpone our wedding. Hello, internet. Do you like my hair? It's very long quarantine hair. <laughs> Chris is gonna cut it. At some point, maybe. It's getting ridiculous. Anyway, tell them about our wedding and our stuff. Oh, yeah, 2020 just kind of just died, eh? <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to get married in June. And as you guys know, as we talked about, um, I did a very like quick turnaround with planning this whole thing. So everything was completely planned and then it had to be completely dismantled. So that was definitely an interesting yeah, experience. Um, I like I feel bad saying it, but the only thing that kind of got me through was knowing that everybody else was in the same position. It is what it is and you have to be safe and realistically the majority of our guests from your side are coming from Australia and that just can't happen. There's no travel. So um, we've postponed it. We're hoping to do it in 2021 and I'm trying to convince this guy to just do the paperwork in the meantime. Yeah. But we'll see it. I don't know. We'll see. We waited 10 years. What's another year, right? Um, what have you been doing? You, let's start with you. I was supposed to start a new job in the film industry in Vancouver. I did like one day starting there, but then this COVID stuff happened. And so everything's being pushed back to like August, maybe? Bit yeah. of a bummer. Because so we were planning on moving back to Vancouver, obviously, to accommodate that job. I just got an update and it was like, your screen time average last week was 10 hours. That's pretty fucked up. 10 hours in a day? <laughs> it's really bad. The average, the average, Three not days. even. It's been bad, you guys. With that said, I have actually been doing things on my phone that aren't like Twitter or playing games. I don't ever play games on my phone. Uh, I've been taking some courses. Um, notably, we purchased Masterclass. Masterclass. Glenn's been doing a uh, Hans like, Zimmer, yeah, like film scoring one. Yeah, yeah. he um, he's a really famous film scorer, and so Glenn was all excited to do his class. And then I was really excited to take Sarah Blakely's. She is the founder of Spanx. Um, I've taken Anna Winters. I've taken a couple of cooking ones. Uh, there's so many things to learn on there, so that's been really fun, kind of putting that on in the background, like puttering around the house doing stuff. Uh, I have been growing mushrooms. I'm really excited about my mushroom grow. This is the first time I've ever grown um, edible ones, not fun ones, although <laughs> I'm sure we'll get to there someday. Um, I have been taking a course on Double Blind, which is a magazine out of the States, and they have like a course for 150 bucks where like you fully get all of the information on how to start from like substrate and culturing and like starting how to basically create the mycelium for mushrooms and then like inoculating some object and then growing mushrooms. Sounds complicated, but the course is actually really, really good. I do have a discount code. They gave me one if you guys are ever interested in growing your own mushrooms. Uh, but yeah, like growing things, growing a lot of stuff in the garden. Uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. I'll show you guys a little bit later, like an actual like walkthrough of it. Today is gonna be a bit of a work day. I'm making a IGTV video, but it's going to live on Sephora's page, which is like a huge freaking deal, you guys, because it's Sephora and I'm kind of like pooping my pants. That's awesome. I'm really excited. I'm hoping to show you guys the behind the scenes of that today of how I plan on shooting this video and this content. So stay tuned for later for that. That's all my morning updates. <laughs> Let's just jump into the day, okay?
I've been planning everything and I have my whiteboard with a storyboard on it. So I'm hoping that that will kind of pre-plan everything. Um, I'm gonna shoot a lot of it myself because Glenn is going to be in his Zoom meetings for his songwriting stuff. So hopefully in between his break periods, I'm able to grab him and shoot like shots where I need to be in it and he needs to film it. It's gonna be a day, you guys. I just pulled a couple of outfits for the video, so I think I should be good with those three. And then I did a quick face of makeup, just really, really basic, and I'm just about to give the bathroom a wipe down, you know? So it's sparkling clean. Um, with that said, you guys need to go and purchase one of these. I've told everyone in my life to purchase this. This is a Norwex window cloth, and you can use them on any type of glass or mirrors, and they clean your mirrors so freaking good, it is outrageous. Like, you can just use this with water and just like wipe it. It can be almost sopping wet, and it still won't streak. Go get one, they're great. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I have my mop, give everything just a quick little run over. Before I forget, I have to take my props out of the freezer. So when you're shooting a video, you don't always get to film everything in order. You kind of have to figure out like what scenes you need to shoot first. So we just did our first kind of scene as me running upstairs with the gear, but in reality that will be placed in the editing a little bit later on in the video. But we did need the lighting to light the first scenes, so we kind of had to like show getting the lighting earlier than later. So Glenn's just helping me get that set up so that we can do a scene in the living room since it's so backlit. It would be really difficult if the camera was turned this way because I'm so dark. So we need to light from this way because there's light coming from the back. You feel me? Filming can get a little complicated so that's why it's a good thing to kind of plan and storyboard and have a bit of an idea and be on the same page. And you don't have to be like wickedly specific. Like look at how terrible that hand is holding a phone. But like we know what it is just by looking at it. That's the point. You don't have to be an artist to be a storyboarder, right Lola? For any of the movement shots, we're using this DJI mobile. Um, it's a really cool stabilizer. It just keeps the footage looking very stable no matter what you do to it. Um, we had a DJI Osmo before and that was a really cool device, but we found we just didn't really use it as often as technology kind of upgraded. So now we have one that attaches to a phone and I think that we'll get a lot more use out of it. But yeah, so this is very helpful for shooting any movement scenes. Honey, you are the multitasking king today. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. How do they do? How do kids do it these days? <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> Nailed it. Doing it. I really don't know how to do this. Three, two, one. Fresh hired me to make it Sephora Instagram TV for Sephora. That word didn't make any sense. <laughs> Glenn's only direction was you need to make it sluttier. So, ratchet. That is not sluttier. These are my favorite scenes when the camera is inside of somewhere and you like reveal yourself. <laughs> Something about a reveal. Girl, we are gonna need to remove these extensions later today. <laughs> it's getting to be a problem. Hello again. Okay, so I am just doing a quick light face of makeup for my last scene. So this last scene is kind of like the classic face wash ad. Like Hayden Panantier splashing water on her face, smiling and she's such, you know, like that style. Um, so I am gonna do my makeup. I'm gonna set up a, like a backdrop to film on just to make everything look really white and angelic. Um, I'm gonna have my hair down because everyone has their hair down for some freaking reason in face wash ads. I don't know how they actually think that this is realistic, but it's kind of the point of my little play on this video. 
yeah, that's all the updates I have for you. And I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna wrap up this vlog today because I feel like there's so much that I wanna catch up with you on and this has just taken up so much more time than I kind of previously planned. So we shall see. I don't know, stay tuned. I got a lot of stuff to talk to you about though, so please don't leave. Change the setting halfway Glenn! through. Glenn! Did you get any of it? Oh yeah, I think I got enough. <sighs> That's so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, honey. <laughs> I told you that shot would work. Okay, it's a wrap for today. I was gonna vlog some more, but I just want to go get baked and watch Desi Perkins' fertility journey. So, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Are you trying to strategically avoid being in this shot with your oh, pajamas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look ridiculous right now. Oh, well, I don't. Yeah, you look like you've been making out on that. Oh, uh, you know, maybe I have. We are like filming this shot at almost midnight. This is the gremlin scene. I just put on a full face of makeup and I'm ready to take it off. So let's shoot this shot and get on with it. <laughs> Hello again, friends. It is the next, I was gonna say afternoon, but it's technically almost evening. It's like almost 5 p.m. and I'm down in the kitchen and I wanted to share with you how I've been making tofu because for the longest time, especially being vegetarian, tofu is something that I didn't really love because of the texture and I found it to just be so boring and bland and shitty and I figured out this new way of how to do it and it's made a world of difference. So I need to basically tell the world because this is a game changer. So we're going to do some tofu prep and then also I have some Hoya cuttings that my grandma gifted me and I'm going to plant these into a terra fiber block and I've never done this but it's super easy so I thought that we could do that together. But let's get this tofu going and then we'll talk some plants. First of all, I'm putting this on because I have wrecked too many white things to not have an apron in the kitchen. This one is super cute. It's from Anthropology. I will try and link it if it's still available, but I wanted one from Anthropology for ages and I just didn't find the print that I wanted and I feel like this is a very Carissa print. It looks so stupid with a hoodie. Alrighty, let's grab this tofu, shall we? I like to usually, when it is into pandemic, buy bulk tofu blocks from Costco because it's just super cost efficient and it's the easiest way to, to get a bunch of tofu prepped. I like to do multiple blocks at once because it makes way more sense to do multiples rather than just do one, it's not worth it. So, oh my gosh, while I'm in here, <laughs> I have to show you guys Lady Creston. Tofu aside for just a second, this is my sourdough starter, Lady Creston. I don't know why she is so large right now. I do not need this much starter, but here we are. So I purchased this starter from a local lady and I was originally feeding it gluten-free flour because that's all I had. And then I swapped back to regular flour. So she's just like a mix of many things. She is a mixed baby. Um, I have yet to bake her. And I'm really embarrassed to say that because I got her at the beginning of lockdown and here's the thing i truly thought like genuinely truly thought like okay i'll just get the starter and then like i'll make bread turns out you need other shit and so yeah i've been stuck with a starter for the past like month and a half and all i've been doing is feeding it and i haven't even baked anything with it it's so embarrassing i have done um sourdough pancakes with the discard though so like i've done something but not nearly enough her name is lady cruston and I know that's a very non-appealing name. I was in a group chat with my best friends and Glenn 
asking for their opinions and my friend's name is Justin and they thought it would be really funny if they called the starter Crustin. It was a terrible name and so I decided to add like a little prefix in front of it. So now she is Lady Crustin, first of her kind, mother of sourdough. I will keep you guys updated on whether or not I actually bake with her, which I'm really hoping will happen in the very near future. But for now, she's just a hungry girl that sits in the fridge and every week I feed her. So that is my starter. And let's move on to tofu. Okay, so all you need is your tofu. You need a knife. You need some type of either Ziploc bag, plastic bag, silicone, stasher bag, something that can go in the freezer and accommodate said tofu, as well as you need some parchment paper slips. Since I've been doing this, I have some pre-cut parchment paper slips that I've just been using and using again. So I'll bring these all out. And those are used as like little spacers so that everything doesn't like clump together in the freezer. Ooh, and you will need some type of dish cloth towels and or a paper towel. We don't use paper towels, so I just use dish cloths, clean ones, duh. Get your tofu out of the packaging. As you can see, they're super thick and there's a lot of water in it, like any tofu. It's spongy and there's a lot of moisture. So what we're gonna do is turn them sideways and we're gonna cut them into thirds. So in a straight of line so that they're kind of even thicknesses. And I'm gonna cut all of these into planks of thirds. Got our tofu sliced. What we're gonna do is lay a towel underneath a cutting board or some form of larger flat object because I would like to use the cutting board to press the tofu. Set your larger, heavier object on top and honestly, I'll sit on it. I just put as much weight as possible on top of this so that it presses the water out of the tofu for like, I don't know, maybe a good 20 minutes. Obviously I wouldn't sit on it for 20 minutes, but you know, like you could sit on it, squish it out, and then like put pots and pans or heavy things on top. You just want to make sure that you're leaving it for enough time that it is squeezing that initial bit of water out. While this is sitting and doing its thing, let's put these plants in these terra fiber blocks, shall we? Terra fiber blocks are blocks of basically shredded hemp and they are a great place for your seeds to start or for like cuttings to root if you're propagating things. There is 50 cubes of two inch plant starters in here. So I feel like I will have this for a while because I don't take that many cuttings. But basically what I'm gonna do is take one of these little blocks and tear it off like this. It's really cool. It's kind of like cocoa fiber almost. Uh, and it looks like this. And what I'll do is I'm gonna take the Hoya cuttings that I have MacGyvered into this glass. They've been sitting in here for a couple of weeks just because I didn't have these blocks in yet. And I kind of held everything together by a bobby pin. So if I can just like take that disgusting bobby pin off. Some of these have already grown little baby roots already, which is absolutely perfect. So stuff like this, what I'm gonna do is just trim the stalk to right underneath the root, and then we're gonna poke the stalks into this little hole. I think that I'm gonna get these wet first. I don't know, I should have read the instructions. <laughs> If I had any more of those black seed starting trays from the garden store, I probably would use that, but I don't. So I'm just using a baking dish and I have some water in it. And then I'm gonna put this block in and it will expand and soften, hopefully making this hole a little bit bigger for these cuttings to go into. Okay, so those are all in, and I am just gonna go set that on a shelf and leave it for a couple of weeks until the roots are happy and healthy and ready to go. And like I said, I'm just gonna make sure that there always is a little bit of water in here just so that the fiber blocks can suck up the water and keep those nodes damp. I'm just gonna keep those over here so that they get a bit of natural light and also so I don't forget them. 
And then let's plant this alocasia. So this little guy was a plant that was much larger and much happier and then it got a case of the spider mites and now it is very small but I was able to save it. It's actually kind of funny because this is probably like a I don't know, two and a half foot plant when I originally had it and all that was left was a single leaf. So since I've had it in that little water jar, it's grown two more leaves and a shitload of the roots. So it looks like it's healthy. I'm going to plant it back into soil and into just a little garden cup. Something that I just got that's been really handy that I would highly recommend if you're working out of a smaller space or you don't have like a planting table or maybe like you live in an apartment, you don't really have somewhere outside to do dirty, messy things and you don't really want to do it in the sink, get one of these tubs. They're just like a dishwashing tub and I swear I've used this so much more than I ever thought that I would. I just got it on Amazon, it was super cheap. And yeah, it's been really handy for plant stuff. So let's fill this guy up. All right, and that is what it looks like inside of its little vanity pot. So I'll put this back upstairs in my bathroom and just be really, really careful to check it for spider mites because for whatever reason, these alocasia stingrays just, they attract spider mites, it's nuts, but I love them. It's about an hour later, I got a little bit distracted with some other work that I'm doing, but let's jump back to this tofu. The tofu has been sitting and pressing this entire time, so it's looking somewhat more dry and so what we're gonna do is chop these tofu blocks into slightly smaller pieces. The cut tofu will be sandwiched in between the pieces of baking parchment paper and what I'm gonna do is layer it right into the bottom of my Ziploc bag so this goes in here and you just keep stacking the tofu in and putting a layer of parchment paper in between each. I couldn't fit all the tofu in the one stasher bag, so I grabbed a second one. And what I'll do is just mark today's date on the bag. Mark your stuff before it goes in the freezer. You'll thank yourself in a couple of months when you're like, what the fuck is this? Uh, I like to use a chalk ink pen because it washes off really simply. So then you put this in the freezer and the water in the tofu expands and it basically forces itself out of the tofu. So when you go to use it, you just take however many pieces out of the bag that you want, you let it thaw on a cloth or on a paper towel or whatever, and then all of the water is out. And so after that, you can then put it uh, into a marinade or you could put some spices on it or whatever you want to do and then the last kind of trick with this is to lightly coat it with a little bit of starch so anything will kind of do you can use like a cornstarch or an arrowroot powder but you pretty much lightly coat it like very very lightly coat it in whatever starch and then you fry it in the frying pan with a little bit of oil that is the secret please let me know if you try it out for yourself. I would love to hear your take on it because this has been so awesome. I feel like tofu is something that I previously never ate and now it's something that I really enjoy eating. So give this a try. So every evening before it gets too late, I come downstairs, I swap my slippers for some slides and I water the garden. So first things first, we gotta go grab the hose. Hose is back through our garage. For whatever reason, these townhomes only have a water spigot like inside of the back of the garage. So not helpful. <laughs> so last year, I didn't have a hose and I like hand packed water up these stairs, filled it up, came back and did like a million trips every day. This year, I found that they have extendable hoses. Let me show you. This hose was absolutely one of the best gardening purchases I've made. Basically acts like a slinky. It is super lightweight, like ridiculously lightweight, very easy to store, and it extends. So I just turn it on and wait for it to kind of extend itself outwards, and then I can go all the way through the house and out to the garden. <laughs> always have to grab one of Glenn's shoes to prop open the door because I don't want the door to obviously pinch the hose shut. And then out the front door we go. Here's a little garden tour. So to my left, I have a eucalyptus plant and some lavender. This plant right here was actually one that Strata had planted in the actual area here, but I ripped them out so I could put a planter bed there. So I decided to take one of them and plant it there. 
this is what that plant looks like in my neighbor's yard for reference. Over to my right, I have a little flower pot of seedlings that are just starting to poke through. And I got a beautiful flower basket this year from the greenery, so that's sitting just out front. Behind that are my potatoes. This is my first time growing potatoes and I am really excited because it seems they're doing quite well. Um, I just sprouted the potatoes in the kitchen, you guys might have seen on Instagram. And then I planted them maybe two weeks ago and they've already grown that much. Behind the potatoes, I have a zucchini plant. Now this one is a golden zucchini and these two are just regular zucchini. I just planted them together for the sake of just having them all in one place, but it's probably gonna be pretty crowded in there. Um, these black grow pots are awesome. You should totally check them out. They help your plants have really healthy roots because a lot of air can get into it. If you don't have like a planter bed or somewhere to like go in ground, these are such a great option and they're super cheap and they last a couple of seasons. So highly recommend. I will try and link them if I can find a link. Behind that, I have some tomato plants just right here. Um, last year, these did really, really well in this spot. So I'm gonna do one more season growing here. I know you're not supposed to like have the same crop in the same area, but too bad, I'm doing it anyway. This is ginger. I've never grown it before, but we'll see how I go. Fingers crossed. I have a couple more tomatoes and these little seedlings are calendula flowers. So we'll see how those go. Down and over here, I have some burlap over top of the ground to try and prevent the birds from stealing my seeds because the little fucks keep coming into our yard and eating all of my corn seeds, which is what is planted in this corner. So I've never planted corn before. I know this is not a lot of room to plant it, but I thought why not try a couple of stalks? We'll see. I think you're supposed to have like a full on block of corn so that it can pollinate itself, but whatever. It'll be fun to try to grow it anyways. Right around this corner, I planted some flowers. I have some seeds and then I had some actual like plants that I planted. Hopefully it will stagger the blooming. Up top, I have two little containers. And then I put in a little stone path to reach those planter boxes back there, just so that I didn't have to get my feet dirty. Okay, and now you're probably wondering what the fuck is on my lawn. It looks a hot mess right now, but I promise it will not be like this for much longer. So our lawn had a bunch of empty patches from just no seed and or Lola peeing there and it just didn't look very good. So I planted some grass seed, but again, the birds kept freaking stealing it. So then I decided to put some burlap over top to prevent the birds from being able to actually peck at it. And I think it's worked. Check this out. Look at all that new grass. Yes! So anyways, I've just kept this really moist. I've made sure to water it really good each night. And it's been on for, I don't know, maybe a week and a bit now. And yeah, I could probably take it off in the next day or so, seeing as majority of the seeds seem to be growing. I still have some that need to germinate though, so I might leave it for a few more days. And then I had a lot of these Ikea Allen key things, and I was like, that will work perfectly. So, I just stab it into the ground and it holds. Genius. Moving on to my pride and joy. This is my planter box and I'm so, so happy that I have this space this year. Uh, this was something that my parents had used for several years and then they upgraded to a different planter and they had this one just kicking around in their yard. So I asked if I was able to take it from them and my dad came down and set it up for me. So, I have some peas and some beans in the back corner near the trellis, a bunch of lettuce, a row of carrots, some beets, leeks, these celery that I actually started rooting in, uh, in the kitchen. These were like celery bases that we already used and I replanted them, they grew roots and now they are planted in here. Uh, this is a little watermelon. This is my little hand to high five. This is the corner where cucumber plants come to die, apparently. I'm not really sure what is going on over here, but I've had a few grow really well and then they immediately just flop over and die. So, hoping that these little guys have better luck. Uh, some more lettuce in here, some peppers, some squash in the back, and yeah, I feel like this will rotate out a lot throughout the summer. 
right over here I have a seedling dome just on top of my eggplant plants because something was eating them. So uh, I wanted to give them a bit of a chance. So I've been covering them the last few days. I have a raspberry bush in this planter bag. I have a strawberry bush in this planter bag. And I have some mint just over here and it's thriving. I have a couple of different varieties. These are fantastic. I've wanted one my entire adult life and I have not had the space to do it. And in Australia, it didn't make sense to purchase one and then drag it all the way back to Canada. So I'm very pleased with this purchase. I feel like a full-fledged adult. There will be a lot of relaxing hours on that chair this summer. So that's what it looks like. And if you swoop over to the left-hand side over here, I have some sweet peas planted. And same kind of deal with these. I purchased some already started plants, but then I also planted some seeds so that they're kind of staggered. Hopefully they will bloom staggered. And here is another tomato plant. I got a lot of tomato plants this year. I have some marigolds that have just bloomed uh, in that pot as well. Next up, this tower, what a purchase. So it's like a little strawberry tower that I found on Amazon, but uh, I filled it with a bunch of like greens and herbs and things like that. Um, I periodically rotate it. It is on a lazy Susan that like rolls. It's not really a lazy Susan. It's more of like a little rolly thing, but um, it works really well and everything seems to be super happy. I've never successfully grown cilantro and it's just like bursting out of here. So I will link if it's still available, highly recommend. And here I have some flowers. I'm not sure if they will all germinate because the seeds were really old. We shall see, stay tuned. I bought some large flowers that I planted in here. They're adorable. I have some spinach in here that I planted from seed. And then I have all of my seedlings. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about these in the actual gardening video that I do because there was a lot of things that I learned that I did wrong with this that I think would be very helpful for people to know. So stay tuned. Uh, but yeah, that's my stuff. I'm gonna go water. So that is our little garden. And then after I'm done the garden, I run upstairs and I missed my mushrooms. And I like to try and tag team this so I don't forget to do either one. I kind of make it into a habit of like, this is just what I do when I take care of the house and the things. So let's go upstairs and check out these mushrooms. This is my mushroom growing tent. So the first layer, I just have a couple of plants and a bowl of water that will hopefully evaporate and help the humidity in here. So ignore the top layer. But down here, I have two blocks that I'm trying to fruit. So the first one is an elm oyster mushroom. And so these fruiting blocks come like this. You basically just cut a X in it, keep it moist and it should fruit. So I'm only a couple of days in on this grow. Hopefully I will see some mushrooms in the next couple of weeks, but I will keep you guys updated. Down here, I have some blue oyster mushrooms and I've done the same thing. I've just been keeping this moist. And so twice a day I come out and I spray it with some water and I just literally spray the sides of the tent. I spray the mushrooms, I spray the tray. I just try and keep it as moist and humid and happy in here as possible. And once it's all sprayed, I just zip it back up and wait till the next morning to spray it again. These fruiting blocks usually take a couple of weeks to produce and then after it produces its first flush, I think I'm going to try and split it up and put it in a different substrate. So a different basically growing medium. And what I plan to do is break this up into a large, like a 10 gallon bucket um, and then grow out of that bucket. So it should be interesting. I will obviously keep you guys in the loop, but this is my little setup for now and I'm just doing it out of these little blocks. 